Hey everyone, welcome to my home. I am doing an impromptu video because this is the weekend of BookCon and this is the first year I've ever gone to BookCon. I didn't know what to expect, but I did want to just drop in and like chat with you about it, chat with you about my experience in day one while it's still fresh in my mind. I literally have only been home for about 20 minutes at this point, so it's still like in my head. Um, so today was a long day. I actually Hold on, first of all, this lipstick was a choice that I don't know if I'm gonna make again, but um, if any of you know, like, something I could do to make this lipstick not look so shiny, or, I don't know. Do you like it? I'm not sure I like it. It's really standing out to me, and it's been like all day I've been really kind of self-conscious about it, and really kind of like, are people looking at me because of my weird lips? Like, do they think I'm crazy? So help me out because I'm really self-conscious about it but I actually on camera really like the way it looks it does not like I didn't like the way it looked all day long but on camera I'm like I just need to figure out how to do the rest of my face to balance it out I think I think it stands out too much by itself but that's not what we're here to talk about we are here to talk about book con so I just wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I got today and talk about my experience so I did arrive there late right? I arrived somewhere between I think 1 30 and 2 Maybe it was between 12.30 and 1. Sometimes my brain switches between time zones. I am from a central time zone and my brain still does that sometimes. But I did get there late and I did that on purpose and I think I might do that again tomorrow because I didn't really have much interest in the things that were going on earlier in the day. And I also just don't like waking up early. I'm a night owl. I, I am up until like 5 a.m. on a regular basis. And when I'm up to like 7 or 8, that's when I'm like, oh, I stayed up too late. Even just my normal staying up till 5 means I don't wake up until the afternoon most days. And I don't work until the afternoon. So that tends to fit my lifestyle. I... I just couldn't wake up this morning. I just couldn't do it. I went there late and it was great because there were no lines. There were some lines, but there were not any like super long lines. I didn't have to wait for a whole bunch of things to, I just could just walk into places because all the people who'd rushed there in the morning had already done everything they were going to do and they were having lunch by the time I arrived. And I was like, cool, I can, I can get all the books, I can, I can get in line, I can get a couple of autographs. I actually got one of the autographs that I intended to get when I went to BookCon, and that was from Karen Parsons. Um, I got her to autograph a, oh, what are they called? The little cards, the autograph cards. They ran out of books, so I didn't get one of her books, but if I buy one of her books online, I can go ahead and stick that autograph card in there. But just being able to like be in her presence and like say hi to her and like look her in her beautiful, amazing eyes and just have her like touch something I've touched and touch me. Um, like she had her hand on me at one point and like it was just... It was nice, you know? She's Hillary. She's Hillary from The Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince is my childhood. Like, a whole bunch of my childhood was spent watching that. A whole bunch of my teen years was spent watching that. Like, watching reruns. So, like, seeing Cousin Hillary, who I always, always adored. Like, Ashley was cool. Obviously, she's, like, probably one of the coolest chicks in, in television in general. She was so funny and, like, like talented. And Tatiana Ali is, like, it, I'd have the same reaction if I met her, like, She's amazing, um, but I was always a huge fan of Hillary, and I know a lot of people weren't. A lot of people were like, oh, Hillary's bougie, Hillary is um, stuck up, you know, Hillary's shallow, and she was all of those things, and I adored her for them. Like, I loved her personality, she was funny, she was gorgeous, something she was really right about, you know. She was way smarter than people gave her credit for, and she was portrayed... Um, I think purposefully that way, like being kind of ditzy personality-wise, but being much smarter than anybody gives you credit for. And I think a lot of that is because Karen Parsons is a great talent. She's a talented person, and I can't wait to read her book. I think it's a children's book, but I'm a big kid. Who cares? I'm going to read it. I wanted to get autographs from um, Alyssa Milano, Tommy Ami Tomi Adeyemi, and... Um, 
I guess that was it. I didn't know beforehand, before literally yesterday, I didn't know that I was going to have to go and pre-book those things early. Um, this is my first year book con, so next year I will know that, but I didn't know that you need to needed to go and get tickets. The tickets are free, but you still need to have a ticket to get autographs from certain people, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, so I didn't do that, and I just kind of got lucky with Karen Parsons um, because everybody else's tickets were sold out by the time I got there. So let me show you what I got, because that's the most exciting part, right? So, oh, I got this heavy bag of stuff. Maybe not leave that right on my lap. And let's start, I guess, with the smaller bag. This bag is from Kieran Rise, which is this, like, really cute looking book series. I'd never heard of it before today. I just, I saw it, and they had, like, all this merchandise that was, like, fight like a girl, and it just looked really amazing and it's like this girl who does Wing Chun, um, Wing Chun Kung, Kung Fu of a sort in Chicago in 2032. I'm from Chicago in case you didn't know. I love futuristic stories. My novel actually is written in 2033 and 2034. Um, so like literally this is like the same time frame in a different city but like the same time frame as my novel. So I'm really excited to see what's happening with this. But look at this cute bag. I, I'm guessing this is the main character. Um, and I guess the rest of these are side characters. I'll let you know when I get around to reading it. But it did come with this free poster, which gorgeous. The guy was nice enough to sign it for me too. Um, but isn't it beautiful? This was, I think, um, one of the only ones that wasn't full color. This was the only one that was like, this kind of black and white aesthetic and that you know it's me that suits my aesthetic very well and then we got the actual book itself what was that oh there are like a lot of paper i guess cards and stuff inside inside of the book look at that all right so we have the actual book here here in rise let's see if we can lower this a little um, the Cast of Shadows. So this is the first of two books, and it's not only a novel, but it's an illustrated novel. So not like it's, there's a difference between illustrated and graphic novels. So illustrated novels naturally will have illustrations on the side, but graphic novels tend to be like bigger comic books, um, bigger and more in-depth types of comic books. Um, illustrated novels tend to be text novels with a few illustrations sprinkled throughout. In Chicago, 2032, people survive. They try to forget their troubles by escaping into the world of entertainment. The United Federation of Mixed Fighting keeps audiences enthralled with bouts of destruction and blood. So this is a martial arts book all about like some big fighting tournament. And then Kieran goes and... Is her name Kieran? It doesn't say on the back. I'm just guessing that's her name. But this young lady goes and kicks some butt with her Wing Chun Gung Fu. And I am just, I'm just really excited. Like, it looks so cool. It looks so cute. Like, I was, as I was walking past this table and I was just like, I need that book. And I was already at the point where I didn't, this was like towards the end of the day. So I had already spent way more than I intended when I went there. Um, but the, both the artist and the writer signed it for me so that's cool let's see what else we got oh right so you may have seen commercials for Nosferatu the new show that is about I don't know Nosferatu um I think there are vampires in it Zachary Quinto's in it and Quinto 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 whatever Zachary's in it and um I guess it's set in some place called Christmas Land I found out because there was this whole setup that was basically supposed to be Christmas land, and you got to like just check it out. You take a picture um, using Facebook's Nosferatu filter, which probably you can get anytime. You don't have to be at the book con, so try it. It makes you look like a creepy old monster, and it makes your environment look really cool and pretty. Um, so you take a picture with that, you show it to a guy, and then you get to take a picture with this other like creepy dude who hands you a gift while he creepily stares at you. Um, I haven't opened it yet, so let's see what's in here. Oh, cute! It's this, like, gingerbread cookie guy. Look at that. Oh. And I guess it's a one-month free code to get 
AMC so that you can actually watch the show for a whole month without commercials. That's really cool. A different kind of vampire story. That speaks to me. Look at this. Look how cute he is. Do you see that? Do you see how cute he is? Yes. Yes. So that, that's adorable. I'm glad they gave me that. Um, I also got, at the end of the day, I got myself a shirt. This is literally the last thing I bought before I left. And it says magic on every page. Magic on every page. I got this just before I left BookCon. And it was the last one they had, so I got really lucky. And of course, naturally, that speaks to my aesthetic too. Black and white, magic, books, all of that together. Hello. So I found this poster found. It was on a table they were giving it out. But um, I actually got this because I'm not crazy about Star Wars myself. Like I don't, I'm not against Star Wars. I have watched most of the movies and I enjoy it, but I'm not like in the fandom. But my partner is, so I got him this. Hopefully he likes it. And I also got him this game. So he's a huge fan of Monty Python. I am not. We will not talk about Monty Python because I know a lot of people are probably going to come for me if I start talking about it, but I really kind of don't think it's very funny at all most of the time. It has its moments, but I really think it's just kind of surviving off of nostalgia. Maybe a lot of people who watched it in high school loved it, but even in high school I wasn't crazy about it, so whatever. But I did get this because I'm crazy about board games and I don't really care. Like, Flux is one of the kind of games that it doesn't matter what skin it's in, it's still the same game and I've played it so many times. Um, so I got us Monty Python Flux. Hopefully he's excited about that. And then, the books. The books. The books of BookCon. There are so many, um... Oh my gosh, please don't fall off my desk. There's so many bookmarks that were handed out today that that I have now. So many, all the bookmarks. But let's see what they are going to go into. What's first? You are not a book. You are the book con. Oh, they gave this little booklet out that just tells you like all the events and all the people who are going to be there. Um, so that's cool because it's kind of, I don't know, it feels like a, a memento, a keepsake that is more specific to the event itself. Oh, okay, the first book I pulled out is Eveline's Number, or Eveline's Number. I honestly don't know um, how that's pronounced, but this is from Bethany Atazida. Atazida? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name, which I, I am. I'm very sorry, but I've had my eye on this book for quite a while. I've been watching her videos um, maybe for like a year or so and I was watching or maybe less but I was watching Mandy Lynn's videos for pretty much a couple of years I think since I think since Essence since right after Essence but I was watching Mandy Lynn for a long time and she started sharing things with Bethany and so I decided to I started watching Bethany and I was really really interested in this story Mandy Lynn I think does a lot of like um seemingly contemporary things and things that seem less fantasy than this. I think there's, in one of her stories, it's like a almost a spiritual fantasy, like a ghost fantasy, um, but this is like something that is, I think it's a little bit more my kind of fantasy. It's not crazy, like, it's not, I don't think there are dragons, I don't think there are like what you would think when someone says fantasy. I read fantasy but not like Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones style fantasy. So this seems like it fits up in it fits in my box and meeting them was just really cool. Like I've watched them like I said for so long and being able to say hi in person and like take a picture with them and just kind of chat for a minute. I didn't have a lot of time because there was another panel happening, but I it just felt really cool. It was like, hey, you're like practically a celebrity to me and I get to talk to you. And it's like, I don't know, a week after I published my first book and seeing where they are, having published, you know, two or three books, having been where I am just a few years ago, it's just, it's really inspiring, you know? So I'm really excited to get into this. It's going to take me some time because I have the longest TBR in the universe. I already had a long TBR before I ever even went to BookCon. So... 
I'm going to get to this, but I feel like this is going to probably move up um, above a few of the things that are already on my list because I just, I really, I like it. I like the cover. I like the description about it. Um, everyone in Eden is assigned a number. It's tattooed on their neck and that just determines their value and their place in the world. On her numbering day, Eveline Vanderich anticipates joining the elite and she never considers any other outcome until it's too late. So I'm guessing she probably isn't as elite as she expected, and now she's got to kind of navigate how that works out. I will probably review this story whenever I finish it. Um, so that's Eveline's number, which, look at this cover. It's really good, right? Like, this is just such a cool cover. Like, I've seen it online, but seeing it in person, that that's pretty cool. I like that, yeah. So next, we got this book, Story of Our Lives. This is actually a young adult book. Um, I think this is also a young adult book. I don't read young adults very often, but I've decided to give it a chance because most of the YouTubers I watch are young adult authors. Um, and so, like, I really want to, to try to understand that atmosphere and try to find stuff that I like because... So much of it I don't. So much young adult. I read it and I'm spending most of the book rolling my eyes. I'm currently reading a book that is new adult, I'm guessing. The character is about 20, 21. Um, but it sounds young adult and I, I've realized that that's one of my big issues with it. Like I'm just constantly just like, why are you? Why are you talking like this? Why, why are you acting like a teenager? It's annoying. Um, so like, yeah, I guess I am not crazy about young adults, I never have been, but new young adult, like the stuff that's coming out in the last few years, it seems like, it seems good. Children of Blood and Bone, I think was the first, like, young adult book that I read as in, as in my adult years, like past 25, and I loved that book. Obviously, there it's, it's a first book, and it's young adult, so it's not going to be, like, mind-blowing, but honestly... It was for me because I've never found a young adult novel that I loved that much since since I was like a teenager myself. I haven't found a young adult novel that, that I really enjoyed like that. And so that, I guess, sparked something. And now I have all these young adult novels that I got today. So this is also a young adult. This was an ARC, so I didn't actually have to buy this one. They were giving these out. Best wishes. So the author also signed this. She gave this out. She also gave me like a um, bunch of bookmarks and some cards and some some other stuff. Oh, this thing, it's like a chapbook. I don't know what you would call this. Chapbooks are for poetry, but this is like short stories um, in relation to this world, I believe. And this book, while she, while it is young adult, these are more adult subjects. So I don't know what's going on in here, but but we'll see. And then what else do we have? Oh yes, oh yes. So I found this book early on when I first got there. This is called Women in Power, as you can see. And it just looks really cool. It's all about like the the women in history. So like there's a scene here. There was a scene I saw something that was like, that went all the way back to like Greek or yeah, here it is, Athenian pot. So like, I don't know what this book is about exactly, I just know that it was very interesting, I've heard good things about Mary Beard, and if you tell me a book's called Women in Power, it's hard for me not to want it, um, because I love women, and I love power, and I love women and power combined, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, this is from Karen Parsons, this is what she signed, for Victoria, keep reaching for the moon, Karen Parsons, as if she knows me, because I love the moon. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I got this book, Fight Club, which obviously is an old book. I don't know anybody who's never heard of Fight Club, but I've never actually read it. I've watched the movie so many times. I think I, um, I think I actually owned this book at one point, but I never ended up reading it. But I did own his book, Choke, or yeah, Choke. That was the glow in the dark one. I did own Choke, and it was great like it was it really really spoke to me like it was horror it was gore it was weird it was creepy it was uncomfortable it was gross um it was just like what the heck so like there was a lot of things all at once that were just that ended up being really fascinating for me like 
a really fascinating overall story and and the way that story is told um if i'm i read this in high i read it in high school so i may be misremembering it but i think it's like a bunch of writers are sent to this place and they're basically locked in until they can come up with like the the scariest story or the the weirdest story or the most powerful story or whatever i don't remember exactly but like they had to come up with a story and so the book is made up of these stories within the overall story and that was really cool and i love this movie so i figured since it was there for five dollars i might as well get it so i got flight club I got Cinder. This also was one of the early buys because I have seen this book so many times, like in the subway. I've seen it everywhere. It's been on my wish list for, for I don't know, years? How long has this book been out? It's been, it's been out for a good time. So it's been on my wish list, I think, since before it actually published. So I needed to get it. I could not not get it. And I'm, I'm excited to read it. Again, it's going to take me some time to get down there, but I'm just really excited to have it. Like, first of all, look at this beautiful ass cover it's gorgeous i'm just worried that if i read this i'm going to want to read all the rest and i'm not crazy about series like i'm not against a series but i would rather tend to kind of jump around and not stay in any one world for too long so we'll see but i'm expecting to love this book next we have a Blade So Black. This also has been in my wish list since before it published. So um, I think it was out on pre-order for a while and I had it on my wish list and I kept thinking about how much I wanted to get it and then I never got it and I don't know why, but this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. Alice in Wonderland is my bae. Um, so I was like, Alice in Wonderland, black girl, fro, looks like there's some blood happening. There's probably death in this book. This is everything I need it to be. And I think this is also a young adult novel. I keep getting those today. So whatever. I guess I'm going to start reading young adult, you guys. Get excited. Get excited. But yeah, I got A Blade So Black. I'm really excited to read this. I'm trying... I'm going to have to rearrange my TBR. I already see it. It's happening. I had a list and that list is now dead. Last, but certainly not least, I have another arc, The World Doesn't Require You. So this is another book that I got um, for free, and it was, it was recommended by the lady who was running the thing. I was torn between two books, and this is one of the first ones that caught my eye. And it's a book of short stories, I think. Honestly, I don't know. It caught my eye, and I was looking at it, and she was like, that one's definitely really good. And so I was like, okay, I'll take it. But I don't know what it's about. Yeah, I think it's short stories. I think it's a whole bunch of short stories about um, being black, being in the world, being an artist, calling America home when it treats you a certain way. So yeah, I got The World Doesn't Require You. I actually got this for free when I got um, the Fight Club and Women in Power. I got those two at the same place. They were both $5. And then this was tossed in with them and that's cool i'm i'm sort of excited to read it like i said i don't know much about it but i like the cover a lot i like the subjects that it seems to be touching on and um it was a free book so i like that a lot and it's coming out in august of 2019 maybe if i read if i can read it before then or read some of it before then i'll you know let you guys know what i think about it if not, I'll, I'll do it later. I guess that doesn't really matter. A book is published, then it's generally out forever. Along with all these books, I also just had a really, really amazing experience. I love BookCon. I'm really... A lot of people I've heard don't have the best time their first day at BookCon because they don't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect, but that's kind of how I go into mu much of my life, not knowing what to expect, but hoping for the best. And today was really, really great. Tomorrow, I'm probably not going to buy as much stuff I'm probably not going to bring home as much stuff because I really, really went over my budget today and it was hard to resist. I wanted so much more than I actually ended up getting. It was really, really heavy. So I'm probably not going to do that as much tomorrow. I do want to focus more on the workshops and the panels tomorrow um, because I only got to see a couple today. And I mean, that's cool. I just really, I got to, I got to book con and I was like, 
I need to look around. Like, I need to look at all this stuff, and I need to see every single booth. And I did that, and it was really cool. I also saw one of my friend's books at a booth, so that was really nice. Um, the overall experience, if you're thinking of going to BookCon next year, I say yes. I say do it. I say absolutely attend, because at the, the least, you can see book lovers collect it. You can see all the books. You can be surrounded by the books. You can be surrounded by book merchandise, book stuff like t-shirts and candles and pillows. I cannot wait to have a pillow based on my book. Like that is weird, but it really, really excites me to get a pillow based on my book or like with art for my, from or for my book. This was a really good day. So I, I appreciate it. I want to say thank you to all the people who host BookCon. Thank you to all the people who had booths and who did panels, all the authors who came, Mandy Lane and Bethany Atizada. At, at, I'm sorry. Bethany and Mandy Lane, it was so, so wonderful to meet you. I doubt you're going to see this, but if you do, I just want you to know that like it was really an honor. It was really exciting. It was really just I liked it. I, I loved it. So that's it for today. Um, I will try to post another vlog tomorrow. These are coming up, you know, out of uh, out of time. So we're still gonna have our regular Wednesday video. These are just just how I feel because BookCon is awesome. So thank you for being here. I got the links in the description. Hit the like and subscribe and that bell so you can be notified whenever there is a new update. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.